Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I wish you all a great 2022. I'm sorry I was away a while. Now I'm back with a new installation of Arch for the January 2022 ISO. In this video, we're going to install Arch from scratch using the BadRFS file system. We have TimeShift, we have VRAM, we have the i3 gaps window manager. We have a lot to cover. So let's get started. So welcome to the installation of Arch Linux with the January 2022 ISO. So you can see here I booted up, it's actually a virtual machine and I connected to the virtual machine via SSH. You can see here I found out the IP of my machine with IP space A on the terminal and then I gave myself as a root user a password with passwd and then I SSH'd so to say into the machine with this command here, entered my password and now I am here. So it's easier for you to see as well. Now, the first thing to be aware of here is that the Arch ISO boots up with a US keyboard. So if you don't have one, you will have to change the keyboard layout. To do so, we have the locale ctl command, which is going to help to do that. And then we can use the list dash keymaps option to list the keymaps available in the system. Now, this is a long list, so you might want to filter through it. So let's hit Q here and Control L to clean up the terminal, pull up the last command with the up arrow and use also the grab function to filter down the search. So my keyboard, for example, is the Swiss keyboard. So it has a DE connotation. So I'm going to type in DE and now I get a much shorter list. And the one I'm looking for is actually this one right here. So I need to load this in the system. And to do that, I can type in load keys and then the string so de underscore ch dash latin one and then hit enter so this is now done next step is to check if we have an ip so ip space dash ca and you can see there i have an ip ending with 252 that's because i have an ethernet cable connected i don't have any wi-fi adapter in here but if you do you will have to use the iwd utility and to access that utility you need to use the iwctl command then you would typically type in here station and then the name of your Wi-Fi adapter that you will find in the list here. It could be something like WLAN zero, for example, or something else. And then connect. Then the name of your network. So in my case, it would be, for example, EF Tech 5, because that's the name of my Wi-Fi station here at home. And then once you hit enter, you will be asked for the password. And once you enter the password, you will be back to the IWD prompt. And here you can hit Control D on the keyboard or type in exit to go back to the ISO. Now make sure that you have an IP with the command we used before and then check if you can synchronize the repositories by using pacman-sy. And you can see in my case, it works just fine. So now we are ready to install Arch. LSPLK, you can see here I have a disk called VDA. So your disk might be SDA or NVMe0N1. So you will have to replace the name of the disk throughout the video here if you have another name. Now we are going to install a lot of stuff here. We are going to use the BadRFS file system, ZRAM, TimeShift and many good stuff. So let's begin here by partitioning our disk. And to do this, because it's a UEFI machine, I'm going to use GDisk because it's going to create GPT labels, which are almost mandatory on UEFI machines. And then the disk path, which is slash dev slash VDA. Now this is a brand new disk. So we have creating new GPT entries in memory. That's fine. So I'm going to create the first partition. So N for new. Partition number one default is fine. First sector is fine. It's beginning at 2048. The last sector defines the size of the partition. So I'm going to do this partition plus 350 megabytes and then hit enter. Now the code is EF00. You can see change type of partition to EFI system partition. And now I'm gonna create the next partition. So N for new, partition number two is fine. First sector is fine and the last sector as well. I'm not gonna create any swap partition or any other partition here because we're gonna use ZRAM for the swap and because we're using the Badra Festival system, we are gonna create a multiple sub volumes in one partition only. So Linux file system is fine. So now we can write the changes to the disk by typing W and confirming by typing Y. 
and you can see the operation has completed successfully. So that means with lsblk we have two partitions. Now we have the partitions, we have to format them. So let's begin with VDA1, which has to be formatted with the FAT file system because it's an EFI partition. MKFS.vfat and then the partition path slash dev slash VDA1 and then hit enter. Now we're going to partition VDA2 with the badrefs file system. So mkfs.badrefs slash dev slash VDA2 and hit enter. Now this is done. So what we need to do now, we need to mount our partitions. But that's a little different this time because we're using the badrefs file system. We need to first mount the root partition, then create our subvolumes, unmount the root partition, and then mount the subvolumes with specific options. So it's a little bit more tricky here because we have more steps to do but let's do one by one so first let's mount our root partition so mount slash dev slash vda2 on slash mnt slash mnt is our installation directory so now that it's mounted we can create our badrefs subvolumes so to do this we can type in badrefs subvolume create and I'm going to create the first subvolume under slash mnt and I'm going to call it with the at mark. That's the symbol for the root subvolume and then hit enter. I'm going to repeat the same process and create also the at home subvolume. And also repeat the same process. I'm pulling up here the last command with the up arrow, by the way, and create also the at var subvolume. So I'm creating three subvolumes here because when I'm taking snapshots, I want to take snapshots only of my root subvolume. That's where the system is installed. Now that we created the subvolumes, we need to unmount the mount directory and remount each subvolume with specific options. So let's unmount first the root directory. So you mount slash mnt. And now we can mount our subvolumes with our options. So mount dash o for options now the first option i want to use is no a time no access time this is going to improve the speed of the disk now i will leave a link in the video description below with all of the options i'm using so if you want to have more info about that you can just go ahead click the link and explore for yourself the next option i'm going to use is compress and for compression, I'm going to use ZSTD, which is going to use by default level 3, which is fine for me. I'm going to use also the SSD option. Now, I'm not sure that Arch picks up this automatically. It's possible it does, but I'm going to write it here nevertheless. And if you do have an SSD, I would definitely recommend you to also have the discard option and make it equal to async. This is going to improve also the performance of the SSD. Now, I would typically also install with the space cache. Now, the problem is recently I discovered if you use the space cache, you're going to have an error when you're trying to mount. I'm not sure why that is. I haven't researched the error yet. So for now, I suggested you use the version 2 of the space cache, which is going to work just fine. And then I'm going to define, of course, the subvol for the subvolume, which is equal to the root subvolume, because that is a volume I'm trying to mount right now. So these are the options I want to have for the root subvolume. Now I need to define the partition, which is going to identify these options, which is slash dev slash VDA2. And then the mount point for this subvolume is slash MNT. And then we can hit enter. So now we want to repeat the process also for the other subvolumes. But before we do this, we need to create the directories where we want to mount those subvolumes. So to do this, we need to type in mkdir for make directory. I'm going to use the dash p switch here to create multiple directories, which are going to be created under the slash mnt directory. And I'm going to open the curly brace and create multiple directories at once. So I'm going to create boot slash efi. This is going to be for the efi partition. I'm going to create a home directory and also a var directory. And then I close the curly brace and hit enter. So I created all directories at once. That means now I can pull up the last two commands and also mount the other subvolumes. So I'm going to trick this a little bit because I don't want to retype everything. So I'm going to add here at home to use the home subvolume. And the device is the same. But the mount point is not slash mnt, but slash mnt slash home. That's one of the directories we created before here. 
and then I can hit enter. I'm going to repeat the same process for the var directory, so I'm going to replace home with var and the mount point as well, slash var. Now we need to mount last the EFI partition, so mount slash dev slash VDA1. This one doesn't have any option. And we're going to mount this under slash MNT slash boot slash EFI and then hit enter. So the partitions are now mounted LSPLK. You can see we have the mount points there, so we can install the base packages. So packstrap slash MNT. So the first package is base. I'm going to install also the Linux kernel. This is the latest Linux kernel. If you want to install LTS, you can install dash LTS. But in my case, the latest Linux kernel will do. And also Linux dash firmware. I'm going to install also Git and Vim, my editor. AMD dash U code, because I have an AMD processor. You can install, of course, Intel dash U code if you have an Intel processor. And I'm going to install also BadRFS dash progs. I'm not sure this is already included in the base package, so I'm going to write it down here anyway. And then I can hit enter. So depending, of course, on your internet connection, it's going to take some time to install. So I'm going to pause the video here, guys, and I'll be back with you once it's done. So the packages are now installed. Now, the next step is to create the file system table for our new installation. So to do this, we are going to use the gen fstab script, which is already on the ISO. And we're going to use the UUIDs of the partitions, which are unique identifiers for each partition. And what we are going to do, we are going to take the information we have on slash MNT. So those are the mount points we created before. And we're going to append them into slash MNT slash Etsy slash FSTAB, which was installed now during the installation of the base packages. And now we can hit enter. So now let's move into our installation by typing in arch dash root slash MNT. And we can have a look at the fstab file by typing in cat slash etsy slash fstab. And you can see there we have our mount points with our partitions. So everything looks good. We can proceed with the rest of the installation. So the first thing we need to do here is to work on the time zone. And to do this, we have the time date ctl command for which we can use the list dash time zones option. And it's going to give a list of all the time zones available. Now, this is, again, a very long list, so we want to filter this out. So let's quit out and also use here the grep function to narrow down the search. Now, the city which is representing my time zone is Zurich. So I'm going to type this in and hit enter. And you can see that's the time zone I actually want to use. So to define this time zone, I need to use the ln-sf command, which is going to use, which is going to create actually a symbolic link between slash user slash share slash zone info slash Europe slash Zurich. So this is my time zone. And I'm going to link this to slash Etsy slash local time and then hit enter. So this is now done and we can now synchronize the hardware clock to the system clock by typing in HW clock dash dash sys to HC and then hit enter. Now the next step is to work on the locales. So to do this, we have a file which is called locale.gen. So let's edit this vim slash etsy slash locale.gen. Now here you have a list of locales, so you can select the ones you want. The one I'm looking for is actually English underscore US, which should be down here somewhere. And that's the one I want. So it has a connotation UTF-8. So what you're going to do here, you're just going to uncomment this line or the lines you want. You can also have multiple ones. And then we can save this file and exit Vim with colon X. And we can now generate the locales by typing in locale-gen and then hit enter. It's going to take a moment to do that. There you go. So now we need to put also the locales into the locale.com file. To do this, I'm going to use the echo command. So echo quotes, and then I'm going to define the language variable here with lang equal to the string I just found, which is en underscore us dot utf-8 close the quotes and we are going to append this information to 
slash etsy slash locale.conf and then hit enter. Now, I advise you here, if it's too fast for you, the pace that I'm installing Arch, please pause the video by every command. If I make it too slow, the video is becoming way too long. And if I make it too fast, then it's too fast to stop the video. So I'm trying to find a good pace here. So I hope this is okay for you guys. Now, the next step is also to define the vconsole file, which is containing the string for the keyboard layout. Now, because I changed the keyboard layout at the beginning of the video, I need to do this. If you have a US keyboard, you can skip this step. So again, I'm gonna use the echo command here. And this time I'm going to define the key map variable. And I'm gonna make it equal to my keyboard layout, which is te underscore ch dash latin one. Close the quotes and append this information to slash etsy slash vconsole.conf and hit enter. Now be aware that this keyboard layout is available only in the console, not in a desktop environment, not in a window manager, and not even in the terminal on a window manager or desktop environment, really just the console. If you want to define this keyboard layout in the desktop environment or the window manager, you will have to redo it. Now, the next step is to define our host name. So let's type in echo. Again, open the quotes. I wanna call my machine Arch. You can name it, of course, whichever you want. And I'm going to append this information to slash Etsy slash hostname, and then hit enter. Next, we are going to work on the hosts file. Now, to do this, I'm gonna use Vim. So Vim slash Etsy slash hosts, and hit enter. I'm gonna go down here and create a new line here. And the first one is going to be the IP for the local host, which is 127.0.0.1. I'm hitting a tab key here and define the name, which is local host. The same is going to be for the IPv6 address, which is colon colon one. Then I'm going to hit tab twice and again define local host. And the last line is going to define the local domain. So 127.0.1.1 hitting a tab key and then my host name, which is arch.localdomain, and then a tab again, and the host name again is arch. And this is done for the host file. Then we can save this file with colon X. And the next step is to give a password to the root user. So pass WD, enter the new password and retype it. And the root password has been changed. So let's clean up the terminal. The next step is to install really some base packages. So let's type in pacman dash s. The first package I want to install is grub. This is the bootloader I'm gonna use. I'm gonna install also EFI boot MGR just in case, and also network packages. So network manager is the one I use. If I'm gonna install a desktop environment, you want to install also network manager dash applet and also dialog and WPA underscore supplicant. These are all networking tools. Now I'm going to install also mTools and DOS FS tools. These are two packages for working with FAT file systems. I'm going to install also base dash devil and Linux dash headers. These are two development packages which you're gonna need for sure. Now, if you're using the LTS Linux kernel, you might want to install Linux dash LTS dash headers. Then if you have a Bluetooth adapter, you might want to install also blues and blues dash utils. I'm gonna install also cups, the printing system, and I'm going to install also XTG dash utils and xtg-user-dirs if you want to have home directories. And I'm going to install also Pulse Audio and alsa-utils for the sound server. And I think for the base install, this should be actually enough. Now you could install also much more packages like for example, GVFS to be able to access more file systems, but it's really up to you. I think for me, this is enough. So I can hit enter here and accept the defaults and proceed with the installation. Now, again, this is gonna take some time depending also on your internet connection. So I'm gonna pause the video here again, guys, and I'll be back with you once it's done.
so the packages are now installed guys so what we need to do now we need to still perform a few steps the first one is to install grub our bootloader so to do this we can type in grub dash install and we need to define first the target which is a 64-bit machine so that is x86 underscore 64 dash efi now we need to define also the efi directory so dash efi dash directory you remember it's slash boot slash efi it's not slash mnt boot efi we are right now in the mnt directory and the last option is dash dash boot loader dash id equal grub now this is going to work in most cases some motherboards require the recheck option so if this doesn't work for you try the recheck option and then you can hit enter i should take a moment here to install grub and grub is now installed now we need to create the configuration file for grub so we can type in grub dash mk config dash o so the output of this configuration command is going to go under slash boot slash grub and then slash grub dot cfg now one thing here you will see check grub disable os prober so that means os prober is actually disabled in grub right now and i actually didn't install it so if you want to use os prober you need to install it first by typing in pacman dash s and then os prober OS Prober, by the way, will help you detect other operating systems if you have them installed. And once you install this, you need to edit the grub configuration file by typing in vim slash etsy slash default slash grub. Go down at the end of the file where you will see you have already the option here, but it's already commented. So that means if you want to use OS Prober, you need to uncomment this line. Right, so then save this file with colon x and rerun the configuration command we run before so if we run it again you will see there it says warning os prober will be executed to detect other bootable partitions so we don't have anything else in here so it didn't detect anything else but if you have something else installed in the system now it's going to be detected so now this is done we need to enable some services in our system so the first one is network manager so that we have internet when we boot up the machine so system ctl enable network manager and then hit enter we are going to enable also the bluetooth adapter by replacing network manager with bluetooth and also the printing system by replacing bluetooth with cups now another thing what i would like to enable is the fstream timer because it's going to also improve the performance of my ssd and it works also well with the discard option we have in the battery file system so i'm going to replace cups with fstream dot timer and then hit enter so for now i think this is all the next step is to create a user for the system because i don't want to log in as a root user so to create a new user we can type in user add dash m so that we give a user a home directory and then the username is hermano in my case i want to change the password or better said give a password to this user so pass wd and then the username give the password and retype it and the password is now created now i want to give this user also sudo privileges to do this i need to type in user mod so i want to modify this user dash a and capital g and that's because i want to append a supplementary group for this user and the group i want to use is the wheel group which we need to configure still and then the username so hermano now if i type in id Hermano, you will see the groups to which I belong to. I have my own group, which is created by default, but the supplementary group is the wheel group. So that's already here. Now we need to also enable the wheel group so that I have sudo privileges. To do this, I need to use the vice sudo command and I want to use it with the vim editor. So I need to define the editor. So editor equal vim and then vice sudo 
gonna scroll down here until I find the wheel group we just talked about, which should be down here somewhere. So we have two of these wheel groups. So I wanna use the first one because using the first one here, I will be entering the password every time I want to actually run it. If I would use the second one, even without a password, I could install programs, but I don't wanna do this. I want to actually use the password as a security measure. So once I've done that, I can actually save this file with colon X. And now Hermano has sudo privileges. So I think the last thing I need to do before rebooting the machine is to edit the mkinitcpo.com file because I'm using the butterfs file system. So let's type in vim slash etsy slash mkinitcpio.conf. And I'm going to go under modules here and enable butterfs. And then I can save this file with colon x. And we need to regenerate one last time the initramfs with mkinitcpio dash p on linux because i have the linux kernel if you have lts you replace linux with linux lts and it's going to take a moment here to regenerate the init ram fs and after this step we can basically reboot our system so this is now done so we can exit and go back to the iso and i'm going to type in u mount dash r on slash mnt to unmount all the partitions and now i'm gonna exit here ssh and i'm gonna actually pull up here my virtual machine so just hang a second with me so here we go so i can type in reboot and if everything went well we should be greeted by the grub bootloader which is right here now i'm gonna actually edit this just for a second you can skip this step of course this is just because i want my configuration to pick up the resolution of my display, which in a virtual machine is a little tricky. So control X to boot up. And you can see now we have the login prompt. So we can log in as a user, the password, and we are now in Arch. So let's clean up the terminal. First thing first, let's check if we have an IP. So IP space A. So again, you can see my IP is there because I have an Ethernet cable. If you have Wi-Fi here, you need to type in NMTUI, which is the Network Manager Text User Interface. Go to Activate a Connection. You will see a list of networks here. You can select yours, enter the password, and then you will be connected as well. Then once you're connected here, you can get out of the NMTUI and check if you can synchronize your repositories by typing in sudo pacman-sy. We need to, of course, authenticate. And you can see I can synchronize just fine. So let's clean up the terminal. So let's go ahead now and proceed by installing the rest of our system. So let's install the packages sudo pacman-s. So first, I want to install the display server, which is XORG. I'm going to install the whole group here. There are some fonts in there which might be useful. I'm going to install LightDM as a display manager and also the LightDM-slick-greeter, which has been moved to the main repositories. It was actually in the AUR before. I'm going to install also the i3 package, which includes i3 gaps, lock status. I'm going to install also the menu. And I'm going to install also LX appearance and also nitrogen for our wallpaper. As a wallpaper, I'm going to install Arch Linux dash wallpaper because why not? And a terminal. I'm going to install XFC4 dash terminal. You can choose, of course, another terminal if you wish. I'm going to install also PyCom, the compositor. I'm going to install also Firefox, one browser, and that's it for now. So I can just hit enter here, need to authenticate and proceed with the installation. So I'm going to accept here all the defaults and accept the installation. So this is going to take a moment to install, guys. So I'll pause the video here again and I'll be back with you once it's done. So there you go. These packages are now installed. We need to still configure the display manager. So first of all, I need to tell LightDM that it has to be enabled. So sudo systemctl enable lightdm. That's one. 
Now we need to tell IDM to use the slick greeter, so we need to edit its configuration file. So sudo vim slash etsy slash lightdm and then lightdm.conf. Now here we're going to go to the seed group. So scroll forward with control F in vim and we need to find the greeter session, which is right here. And we need to uncomment this line and replace the example here with light dm dash slick dash greeter. And another option that I need to actually set up is the display setup script because it's a virtual machine. You can skip this step if you are on metal. So here I need to type in x render dash dash output on virtual one. And the mode is 2560 per 1440. And I need to uncomment this line. So this looks good. We can save this file with colon x. Now we have most of the things, but there are still some things which are missing. First of all, I want to install a helper for the AUR. So I'm going to use Paru to do that. So I'm going to install it with git clone because we installed git before. HTTPS colon slash slash AUR dot arch linux dot org slash paru dash pin so i'm going to install the binary because it's a little quicker it's going to clone the repository now if i type in ls dash l you will see i have the paru directory there so let me go in there and now i can install the package with make pkg dash si and hit enter now, again, this is going to take a moment to build up. So I'm going to pause the video here, guys, and I'll be back with you once it's done. And you can see it installs very quickly. So we can go back to the home directory and now we can use Paro to install several things. So I want to install actually a couple of packages from the AUR. So Paro. So the first one is time shift because it's in the AUR. I'm going to install also time shift dash auto snap. So AutoSnap is going to create snapshots of my system when I update the system, not when I install packages myself, but just when I update the system. Then I want to install also the ZRAMD package, which is going to install the ZRAM on my system, which is what I want. And I want to install also LightDM-Settings, which is still in the AUR, and then I can hit Enter. Now I can select here the number one because time shift pin, I believe, is out of date. Proceed with the review, yes. I'm gonna quit out of here and proceed with the installation. And I'm gonna install here the packages and build all of the things that I need to build. So this is gonna take some time guys to build and install. So I'll pause the video here and I'll be back with you once it's done. So the packages are installed. Now, if you install TimeShift AutoSnap, it's actually an option, but you can also install the grab padrefs package. What this does, it's gonna show you snapshots also on the grab bootloader. Now, if you boot from the snapshots, they are going to be read only. You have always the options to restore from snapshots in time shift. But if you wanna do that, you can install grab padrefs with sudo pacman dash s and then grab dash padrefs and proceed with the installation. This is going to replace basically grub in your system. And when you're going to get snapshots, you're going to basically have your snapshots also on grub. But as I said, these are going to be read only. So we installed now everything we need, but we need to still activate our ZRAM. So to do this, we can type in sudo systemctl enable dash dash now, and then ZRAM D and then hit enter. Now, if I type in lsblk, you will see we have swapped there with the ZRAM. So we are set to go. We can reboot our machine and boot into i3 to finish our installation. So let's type in reboot. It's going to take a moment to do that. So let's put up the machine. And if everything went well, we should be greeted by the LightDM display manager, which is right there. It's black. It's not configured, but that's fine. We're going to change this after. So let me enter my password here. Hit enter, create the configuration file and accept the Windows key as a modifier. And now we are in i3. So if I hit now mod enter, I have XFC4 terminal here. Now, remember when I told you before that the vconsole.com file, the keyboard layout is valid only in the console. So here I'm basically back to the US keyboard. And to change this, I need to type in set XKB map and then the connotation of your keyboard 
to go back to your keyboard layout. I'm going to add this afterwards to the configuration file so I can increase the font size now. You can see better. And now we are in i3. So let's configure i3 very quickly. Let's type in vim.config and then i3 slash config. We just created the configuration file now. I'm going to go down at the end of the file here and define a few options. First, the keyboard. So that means when i3 boots up, I want to execute set xkb map on ch. Ch is the connotation of my keyboard. Replace it with yours. Next, I want to have also the wallpaper restored when I boot up my machine. And for that, we are going to execute nitrogen dash dash restore. Next, I want to have my lock screen. So lock screen. And here I'm going to create actually a shortcut. So I'm going to use the bind sim command. And I'm going to bind basically the mod key, so dollar sign mod, plus X. I'm going to use the X key in my case. So when I hit this combination, I'm going to execute i3 lock. And what happens when I hit that key is I want to have the color, so the dash C option. In my case, it's going to be black. So six times zero. That's another one. Next, I want to also have the gaps available. So I'm going to type in here gaps. I'm going to use inner gaps. So gaps inner. I'm going to make it seven. You can replace this, of course, with the value you want. And next, I want to have also my compositor. So PyCom. Now, when you start i3, I want to execute PyCom. Dash dash no dash fading dash open close. Now that's because I don't want to have fading when I'm opening and closing windows. I need to still configure PyCom. I'm going to do it afterward. But now I can save this file with column W. And there is one thing that you need to be aware with i3 gaps. So let's open up the D menu here with mod D and open up Firefox. That's an option you need to have in i3 gaps to have the proper function. So let's search here for i3 gaps. And you want to click the first link here and go down to the first line of code. You can see here, in order to use gaps, you need to disable window title bars. So we need to copy this line, go back to our configuration file here and paste this in with Control shift v and we need to use this, otherwise gaps will not work properly. So now we can save this file and exit Vim. We can close also the browser. We can also configure quickly here our terminal. So I'm going to go here with underline and blinking cursor. I'm going to also here disable the scroll bar. Under appearance here, I'm going to use actually a slightly bigger font. And for the background, I'm going to go with transparent background. Now it says here it's not working because I still need to configure PyCom. I'm going to do this in a second. And for the color, this is right now fine. And let me go back to appearance. I need to disable also the menu bar here and click close. Now I want to close this window with mod Chief Q. Reload i3. And let's install also our wallpaper. So mod D, nitrogen. And let's configure nitrogen. Let's go to preferences, add, let's go to file system, go to user, share, backgrounds, Arch Linux, and click select and click OK. I'm going to select here a very nice mountain background. I'm going to make it here a zoomed fill for the first screen. Well, actually, that's the only screen I have. And then closed nitrogen with mod shift Q. And now we have our wallpaper. Now, if I hit mod enter two times, you will see we have our gaps available. So this is now done. 
all we can do now, we can also configure PyCom. So PyCom has its own configuration file, which we need to copy over the config directory in our home directory. So to do this, we can type in cp slash etsy slash xdg slash pycom.conf. And we want to copy this under slash dot config. Now we can edit that file by typing in vim dot config and then pycom.conf. Now, the only thing I am going to change here is the vsync option because I know I need to change this in the virtual machine. So I need to make it false. So I'm going to comment this out and comment vsync true. And there are plenty of options here to change also the transparency and also the fading if you want to do that. It's really up to you how you want to configure this. So have fun configuring your compositor here. For me, this is enough. I can hit the colon X here to save this file. Now I'm going to exit once I3 with mod shift E and I need to retype in my password here. And now if I hit mod enter, you will see I have transparency. That's a little too much for my taste. So I'm going to go here again under appearance and go to 85%. That's fine. So next, if I hit mod D, you can see here we have D menu which is basically showing us everything we have installed in the system. Now, there is another way here to display the desktop sessions. To do this, we need to install a package from the AUR, paru-s, which is called j4-dmenu-desktop, and then hit enter. So I'm going to install the first repository here and proceed with the review, which is fine, and import the key here and proceed with the installation by entering my password. I think that's fine and proceed with the installation. So this is gonna take maybe like 30 seconds to build the package. So I'm gonna pause the video here quickly guys and I'll be back with you once it's done. And so the package is installed. Now to use it, we need to go back in our configuration file for i3. So dot config i3 and then config and I'm going to search for the menu here. And what we need to do, we need to replace the menu run here with j4 d menu desktop. And I'm going to keep actually the menu run here in the next line with a comment just in case if I need to use it one day. Then I can save this file and exit Vim. I can reload i3 with shift mod R. And now if I hit mod D, you will see that I have the desktop sessions here for my programs. Now, if I go to customize look and feel, this is LX appearance. And here I can define basically my themes and my icons if I want to do this. So I could install, for example, something like pacman-s. I can install the arc-gtk theme and the papyrus-icon-theme, for example. And it's going to take a moment here to install the packages and the icon theme. And now again, if I open up the customized look and feel, we can change the look and feel of our system. So arc dark, I'm going to choose and also the papyrus dark icons. There you go. And I think I forgot to install actually a file browser, sudo pacman-s. I'm going to install Thunar from XSC. It's a very light file browser. So if I open it up right now, with Tunar File Manager, you can see it right here. So this is done. What's next? We need to configure time shift. So sudo time shift dash GTK. We need to use this option because we are actually in a window manager and we need the GTK package. So badrefs is detected automatically, you can see there. I'm gonna select next year. The disk is fine. The schedule you can change accordingly to your needs. Enable ButterFS queue groups, that's fine. And that's done. So we have time shift here available. I want to create one snapshot, so I'm going to click create. It's going to take a second to do that. And the snapshot is created. Now we can ignore this error because quotas are not enabled, that's fine. So I can use mod shift Q to get out of time shift. Now, as I said, this snapshot is not going to appear in grab unless you rerun the grab configuration command. So if I type in sudo grab dash mk config here dash o and slash boot slash grab slash grab dot cfg, 
you will see now the snapshot will appear here because I did it manually. But if you don't, you're going to have snapshots only if you make system updates. Now let's also configure the LightDM Display Manager. So sudo lightdm-settings. And here for the background, again, I'm going to go under backgrounds here, select arch, and I'm going to use here this mountain picture this time and click open. And for the theme, art dark, and the icon theme is papyrus dark again, and that's going to be fine. Now, if you want to have the full username when you log in, instead of the username of the system, you can also use sudo usermod dash c for comments. And here in the quotes, you can type in, for example, something like my full name and then the username. And let's see what happens if we log out. So mod shift e. We should have our wallpaper here. There you go. And you can see now my full username. You can type in the password. And we are back in our window manager. Now you remember I define actually mod X as a lock screen. So if I hit mod X here, you can see I have a black screen. Now this is personal preference, but it works. So that's fine. So let's open up the terminal one more time. And there is something that I would like to still show you is how to configure also your i3 status very quickly to personalize this a little bit more. So by default, i3 status here picks up the file from the Etsy directory, which is not really optimal. So we want to configure this personally by typing in cp slash etsy slash i3 status. And I'm going to copy this over dot config slash i3. That's my personal choice. And I want to edit that file with vim.config slash i3 and then i3 status. Now let's say, for example, I don't want to see the IPv6. Uh, I don't need this and also the wireless because I don't have it in my system and the battery as well. So I'm going to disable these options. Now you might say, OK, well, we have this. We just need to save this file, reload i3, right? Nope, because i3 is using still the configuration file in the Etsy directory. So we need to edit our configuration file. So vim.config. And instead of i3status.conf here, we need to edit the configuration file for i3. Now we'll go down here uh, where we have the bar. And we need to go down here and tell to use the configuration file we just edited. So we go down here, i3status. Enter insert mode with I in Vim dash C to define the configuration file. Now I'm going to insert here the absolute path. So slash home slash hermano slash dot config slash I3 slash I3 status dot conf. And then I'm going to save this file, reload I3 with mod shift R. And you can see now battery IPv6 and Wi-Fi are not anymore in my bar. Now, I don't actually use the icons in my tray, so I can add this option here, tray underscore output equal to none. Now, if I save this again and reload i3, you can see the icons are gone. Now, you might say, well, yeah, but these fonts are too small. How can we change that? Well, let's open up Firefox. We have a very nicely written i3 bar documentation. So i3 doc and hit enter here. I'm going to go to the documentation and I'm going to go to the user guide and then go down to the i3 bar and check the font section here. So you can see we have something. This is an example. So you would copy these two lines here. You can copy these two lines if you want. And then here under the last option I defined, I can paste them in. And I need to actually realign them a little bit. And I'm going to realign this as well. Now, this is going to depend if you have this font enabled. Now, I don't have the Deja Vu font here, so let me close the browser. And once I save this file, and reload i3 again. You can see the size of the font is a little bigger, but we don't have this font enabled. So let's install the Deja Vu font, sudo pacman-s. I think it's ttf-deja vu, if I'm not mistaken. Enter my password here and install it. 
and now I want to actually close this window and increase actually the font size still a little bit further. So let me go here instead of 10, I'm going to do it, let's say 12 and then save the file, reload i3. And there you go. We have now the font and the size. It's definitely much better. So I'm going to close this out, close also the terminal and restart it. You can see we have also the new font there. Now, the last tip I would like to give you is sometimes people tell me, well, I have now the terminal. It's nice without borders and everything, but the text is much too close to the corners here. Is there a way to add padding? Well, there is. So let's open up again our Firefox browser and type in, in here XFC4 terminal padding. Search for this. You can go here on the first link. There is a Reddit post here which contains exactly the code you want. So you can just copy this. And thanks to the user who posted this, by the way. And you can see it tells you here to put this code into this file, which does not exist yet. So we can type in, in here vim dot config then gtk dash 3.0 slash gtk dot css and then we can enter insert mode here and paste the code with control shift v and then we can save this file and exit vim we can close the windows reload the terminal again with mod enter and you can see now i have slightly more padding on the corners if that's your thing this is how you can do it so lsblk one more time to check our zram is there and working free dash h you can see we are using right now 397 maybe bytes of ram not bad so i think guys we covered a lot of stuff here so i hope you could follow through and again if you have any question about the video let me know in the comments below i will try to answer you as soon as i can so this was the monthly installation of Arch using the January 2022 ISO. We covered a lot of stuff. If you have any question about the video, let me know in the comments below. I hope the pace was okay for you guys. I'm always trying to find a good balance. But if you have any question, let me know in the comments below and I will try to answer you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching the video guys. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you soon in the next video.